All right. Thank you so much. Welcome to another episode of the Love Hope Lime podcast. My name is Fred Diamond. Of course, I'm the author of Love Hope Lime with family members, partners, and friends who love a chronic Lyme survivor need to know. And of course, I'm the host of the Love Hope Lime podcast. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please feel free to go up and five-star rate us. We would appreciate that. We've gotten a lot of great attention to the show. We have tons of listeners all around the globe. So um, I'm happy that you're here. We have another good show for you. Uh, the book, Love, Hope, Lime, it's available on Amazon. Uh, Dr. Levy, I've also made the e-version of the book free from day one for chronic Lyme survivors. So if you're a chronic Lyme survivor, reach out to me via Facebook or LinkedIn, where I spend a lot of time on my business side, and I'll send you the PDF of the book. You can also get the Kindle version and of course the print version up on amazon.com. If you'd like a signed version, reach out to me again via Facebook or LinkedIn and we'll let you know how to get there. Uh, when I, whoops, when I wrote the book, oh, when I wrote the book, I met some amazing leaders in the Lyme community, doctors, medical practitioners, charity directors, and they've helped me to understand what living with Lyme is all about. So on the podcast, I invited them to share their insights into how you can support those you love. If you're a chronic Lyme survivor, the podcast will also help you understand how you can let your family and friends support you, how you needed to be supported. You know, Dr. Levy, that actually wasn't one of the original goals. The original goal was for family members, partners, and friends. And what a lot of Lyme survivors have reached out and told me is that the, the podcast has helped them and the book has helped them uh, talk to their loved ones about how they needed to be supported. Just as a reminder, we transcribe every episode. You can find all the back episodes at freddiamond.com. Just click on the Love, Hope, Lime button. All right, let's get started. I'm very excited to guess. Uh, my guest today is Dr. Thomas Levy, and he's a consultant to the Reardon Clinic. We got connected, Dr. Levy, through my good friend, Vern Harnish, who I've known for a long time. I've attended uh, a lot of his sessions. I like to tell people that his book, Building the Rockefeller Habits, is one of the best business books I've ever read. I've given probably a couple dozens of, of that book out to people. So uh, shout out to uh, shout out to the great Vern Harnish. Why don't you give us a little bit of an introduction, and then we'll get right into some of the questions. Well, okay. I'm a uh internist, cardiologist, uh, and of all things, a lawyer. Uh, I practiced traditional cardiology up until 1993. Uh, in the subsequent 30 years, after meeting a biological dentist by the name of Dr. Hal Huggins in Colorado Springs, that was when I like to say my medical education truly started. It was taught to me by a dentist. And I don't say that maliciously or negatively, but uh, modern medicine, medicine as we know it right now, I'm sorry, I find it fails much more than it succeeds. It promises much more than it delivers. And probably the worst thing is it act actively suppresses therapies like the ones I'm gonna talk about uh, because they bypass pharmaceutical drugs and the hospitals and doctors just can't have that. So over the subsequent 30 years, I've written 13 books. I've, a lot of them focus around the importance of vitamin C uh, and other things, the contr contribution of dental toxicity uh, to all diseases, heart disease and breast cancer especially, and even some more recent things we've come across with the pandemic, a recent book focusing on hydrogen peroxide nebulization as getting rid of the virus and also stabilizing the gut, which makes, I think, most people, most docs realize a screwed up microbiome and a leaky gut contribute an enormous amount of pathology to every other disease of the body by virtue of the abnormal pathogens and toxins get, that get absorbed from that. So that's been pretty much my background right now. And I'm spending most of my time giving talks, giving lectures. I'm working on my 14th book right now, trying to put together, no, I've put it together. I'm trying to promulgate a sound scientifically based way of treating just about everything okay that might seem grandiose but all diseases have common denominators and it's when you start focusing on the common denominators and don't let yourself get distracted by other things that don't directly pertain to the pathology of the disease amazing things start happening as far as clinical recovery so one of the missions, again, of the Love, Hope, Wine podcast is to educate 
the people around the Lyme survivor on what they need to know, how they can be of better support. Uh, you know, when I began this journey in 2021, I was shocked to find out uh, how many Lyme survivors felt that they were abandoned by their partners and people left and friends left and, you know, all the things that, that we're familiar with here that people listening are familiar. So I want to ask you the first question, which I typically ask, but then I want to also get a little more into your approach, like you just alluded to. Again, obviously we talked about vitamin C and, and healing the gut. I want to get a little deeper into that more deep than I usually do on this podcast, just so that uh, again, people who are supporting the Lyme survivors can understand what that means. But let's start with our first general question, which is usually, what are three things family members, partners, and friends need to know about what their loved one is going through? You know, I can't profess to be an expert in answering such a question, but my response would be to make it clear to the individual that they're loved and they're being supported, okay, regardless, that their disease is not a burden to you, okay, and that things are always coming up that can make things a lot better, even though they haven't been around in the past. Uh, it's a shame, the stuff that we have out there that doesn't get recognized. But I would strongly advocate against trying to treat the patient like a victim and let them know that there are things that we can do together. Uh, we may not get all the way where we want to go, but there's a lot of things now, I guarantee you, uh, that could put people in a completely different frame of mind. What's going on right now with Lyme disease is incredibly analogous to the chronic COVID syndrome patients. They're just completely wiped out. Every organ system gets involved. Tremendous CNS and mental and emotional difficulties. And of course, a lot of other serious things with the COVID uh, spike protein, myocarditis and other things. <laughs> that don't quite readily cause, uh, th that cause death much more rapidly than Lyme. But I would just avoid the victim syndrome, make sure the person knows they're loved, and continually speak realistically that new things are on the horizon. So just don't give up. So let's get back to your, your um, root uh, approach to treatment, if you will. Again, you know, you're a worldwide expert on vitamin C, but get a little deeper into that uh, for the next couple of minutes on your approach to treating Lyme. You know, this all started almost 15, 16 years ago. Uh, in my book, uh, Curing the Incurable, Vitamin C Infectious Diseases and Toxins, it's pretty clear that Virtually any infection is curable if you use vitamin C in high enough doses, frequently enough, and often enough. Sounds simplistic as hell, but it really turns out to be true. So I gave a lecture to a, uh, some nurses at a lay group in Tennessee, um, like I said, 15, 16 years ago. And I don't remember exactly what I said, but at some point in time, I believe what I told them was, if you're not getting the result you need with vitamin C, you need to take more and take it more often and take it for a longer period of time. And then some weeks to months later, the nurse that was in charge of that conference got a hold of you and said, Dr. Levy, you need to know something. I said, well, tell me. He said, well, we had this patient who's had horrible, severe chronic Lyme disease for many years, all the, all the blood work, everything. And she heard you talk about vitamin C and so she insisted until we finally gave in to give her a 50 to 75 gram infusion of vitamin C every day of the week, six days a week, uh, up to about 20, 21 infusions. And what you, what you need to know is she didn't get better at all for the first 20, 20 uh, infusions, but she was still hanging on to what you said and said, no, I want more, I want more. And on the 22nd infusion, the nurse said, and I have it in an email, it was like a light switch was flipped on and she went from feeling horrible to feeling perfectly well and has had no recurrences since then. And she was so gratified, she still, and this was a very good idea, intuitive on her part, continued the high dose vitamin C for another week just to make sure there was no relapse. And there's been no relapse. Uh, I told this story to a 
dead to a doctor who has treats a high volume of Lyme patients. And he tried this with 14 other patients. And he says, it's just incredible how completely each one of these patients mirrored uh, that patient's experience. So, you know, it actually reinforces what I, and the thing I say about Lyme, Lyme is what I call an embedded or hidden pathogen. I've had a number of cases of Lyme where when early on, right after the bite and the rash and then feeling lousy, hit them with IV vitamin C right there and you knock it out, no questions, really quick. As it wakes, it makes its way inside the body, it gets into areas that are not easily penetrated. And this is where the persistent high dose of vitamin C kicks in. Now, that wouldn't be my complete recommendation today because there's a lot of other bio-oxidative therapies that work in synergy. They include different ozone therapies. They now have an incredible EBU, an extracorporeal blood oxygenation ozonation with a filtration device in it, just like kidney dialysis. So it filters your blood and virtually ozonates the entire blood volume in a city. This combined with, if the response is not complete, hyperbaric oxygen therapy with vitamin C infused through the chamber in the patient while, while this being done. Now there's many other supported things, all the different vitamins and minerals. I'm trying to give you the shortcut to what I think uh, if somebody wants to invest their money, and again, hey, you know, medicine, everything else is a crapshoot. There are no guarantees. And I don't encourage in my lectures that people do this because I don't want a bunch of people that have spent five or $10,000 on 20 vitamin C IVs and don't feel better. And now I'm the bad guy. I'm just telling you what I've seen, what has happened. Uh, and when you add to that, hydrogen peroxide nebulization to take care of chronic pathogen colonization, which heals the gut. I've had this heal fungal infections. I've had this resolve completely Crohn's disease. I've had this resolve completely leaky gut disease. It's all because we grow pathogens. We don't know they're there. We swallow them. And when you clear it out with hydrogen peroxide, that as an additional boost to everything else, I'm optimistic all the Lyme patients that would see my colleague at the Reardon Clinic, Dr. Honeyhacky, would get better. Uh, and I would not be surprised if a few of them resolved completely. So as we started, said at the start, don't accept a V. Don't be a victim, okay? Continue to press forward because you're not going to hear about this at the Mayo Clinic. You're not going to hear about this at Johns Hopkins. You're not going to hear about this anywhere in mainstream medicine. I'm sorry, if you've been paying attention during the pandemic, you might actually finally realize that the welfare of the patient is not the number one concern of modern medicine or the doctors or the hospitals or the pharmaceuticals or any part of the healthcare system. So you raise a really interesting point. And, um, you know, you, you even gave a couple caveats there that there's a lot more that needs to be considered, you know, as the patient goes through their treatment. Uh, I would see a lot of people on social media uh, saying, you know, do you recommend uh, X treatment, whatever it might be? And then you get people who say, I did it and it saved my life and I'm in remission or recovery, whatever. And then you get the next person who says, I tried it over a weekend and it didn't solve my problem and I wasted $5,000. And then you see another person who says, I stuck with it for six months. I'm not saying vitamin C treatment, I'm saying in general thing. Right. Then you see the back- Some treatment. Some treatment, the back in the fourth. So I think that's a message as well too those who love a chronic Lyme survivor is that uh, it's a complicated disease that, you know, would you say that each person has their own uh, protocol? You know, one thing we talk about is, you know, you break an ankle, every orthopedic surgeon on the planet is going to take an x-ray, they're going to put you in a cast, then you're going to go through rehab every, no matter if you're in Siberia, Sydney, Australia, or New York City. With Lyme, it seems that almost every uh, every survivor goes through their own unique protocol with obviously a lot of similar commonalities. Yeah, no, I, I think the basic protocol is going to be similar for everybody, but there are additional things depending on, as you just pointed out, the ability to pay for it, the access to it. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is not only expensive, it's very difficult to find. Uh, they don't have that many hard chambers. You need to have oxygen under 
one and a half to two to three times atmospheric pressure. Uh, but we've seen in the past, hyperbaric's been around for a long time and completely knocks out deep-seated bone infections that have been present for years, that antibiotics, vitamin C, ozone, all the other things just can't touch. So, but then again, without having a sophisticated explanation, why is hyperbaric successful? Because it's got the pressure. What did we say about Lyme and chronic COVID? It's a hidden pathogen that's gotten deep into the tissues, inside the cells, inside the mitochondria, inside the nucleus. And literally, the more pressure you can put, you get things in deeper and things start happening. That's a great answer. Thank you so much. What should the loved ones expect as, uh, or the, what should the, the family partners and friends, what should they expect as their loved one's journey continues? Yeah, you mentioned in the beginning, you know, the nurse said well, that one of her people, you know, went through 20, I think it was like 20 or 29 sessions, you know, with mm -hmm. the uh, vitamin C and then like a, a light bulb went off type right. of a thing. So that's a journey, man. That might, it's not over. It's not a day. It's not a pill. You know, it's a long sustain. And almost everybody that we've spoken to, Dr. Levy, again, I'm talking to Dr. Thomas Levy here as a consultant with the Reardon Clinic. Um, you know, it's, it's not a pill. It's going to take for, for a while. It's going to take a, a long journey. What should they expect as their loved one goes through this? Well, a lot depends on the type of patient that we're dealing with. I mean, if you have a 16-year-old previously healthy kid with, with Lyme for six months versus a 75-year-old that's been uh, sick for three or four years, you, know, you can't expect the same type of response to different therapies. And you shouldn't try to unrealistically expect to have uh, the same type of response from one group of patients to the other. So that's very important. And uh, it's sad, but I mean, the economic circumstances has <laughs> made it almost impossible for most people to even afford simple supplementation. It's difficult for many families to just come up with 30 or 40 or 50 bucks a month for, for a few quality supplements. Uh, this, uh, I might say as an aside, the real long-term solution to health problems and the economy is one simple thing. If Congress could ever pass a bill, big thing there, that forced insurance companies to pay for whatever they're insured once as a treatment, then everything was settled out. Because most people now, a large number of people know that modern medicine therapies are garbage. They not only don't help, they don't do anything to prevent the underlying disease from progressing. All they do is lather over a few symptoms and try to make you feel better and stay sick and continue to need the drugs. And anybody that thinks that's a radical statement has not been paying attention during the pandemic. Yeah, no, I've heard that so many I've spoken to uh, over 2000 Lyme survivors over the last two years since I started doing the research on the book. And um, you hear that time and time again, which is why uh, the Facebook groups and the Instagram groups and Reddit have gotten so popular because, you know, a lot of people have exceeded the knowledge of their doctor on their particular case. You know, it's like, you know, you see your doctor once a month or whatever it might be, or, you know, you're dealing with this disease every single day and you have all these symptoms. And, you know, if a doctor is going to give you 30, 40 minutes, this, this isn't really a reflection on, on doctors. It's, it's on the entire medical, medical system, if you will. Um, any final thoughts again? Uh, you know, as I'm thinking about vitamin C, can you just explain why vitamin C does this, you know, why it's such a uh, important uh, vitamin for treatment of what we're talking about today? Well, all health depends on a brisk and rapid flow of electrons in all the cells of the body. And an antioxidant like vitamin C literally relays those electrons. It goes from oxidize or reduce, oxidize or reduce, to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. And when you have large amounts of vitamin C in the cytoplasm, you have a pool that literally allows the conduction of biological electricity inside the cell. And that's what keeps the cell healthy. That electricity causes a transmembrane voltage that's also been documented in hard scientific studies to be what is required for a healthy cell. So 
And the vitamin C does that better than any other antioxidant. Other antioxidants help a lot. Uh, one antioxidant that I'm getting a lot of experience with now that, wow, uh, I take it myself and, and I, I value it like I do vitamin C, it's methylene blue of all things. Uh, and uh, any of your listeners who want more information on this, you can give them my email address and I'm more than half happy to send them a few free eBooks and some articles that can go into this information in detail. Once again, we talked today with Dr. Dr. Thomas Levy. Again, um, why don't you give us a final thought? You've, I mean, we could, you know, sure. the whole purpose of Love, Hope, Lime, the podcast is to be relatively short so that people can focus on some answers, get a little bit of peace, educate those around them on what they're going through on a daily basis. So, you know, some of the things you talked about, I'll be honest with you, we could have gone three, four hours, but that's not really of service to our listeners. Give us a, a final thought, a final thing you'd like to get across to make sure that your message is complete to our audience today. Very simple. Never tolerate an arrogant doctor. Hmm. If you ask a question and get dismissed and can't get a simple answer without condescension, don't walk out of that office, run out of that office if you're capable of running. I mean, uh, people need to realize, and I mean, medicine has done this to them. They are their own best doctor because we cannot rely on the medical system as it currently exists, in my humble opinion, to deliver quality medical care most of the time for most conditions. Uh, we need to seek elsewhere. We have great amounts of information online now wonderful institutions like the Reardon Clinic, uh, and there's many other integrative medicine health physicians out there. Those are the words, integrative health healthcare physicians. Uh, so if you just get sick and you just go to the first doctor that you see in the yellow pages that's close to your house, forget about it. You, you're, you're, you're not giving yourself much of a chance of improvement or recovery. All right, once again, I wanna thank Dr. Thomas Levy for being our guest today. My name is Fred Diamond, and this was the Love, Hope, Lime podcast.